Good morning and welcome back to Y254 in the morning. My name is Faith Msoli. And just in case you're joining us, it's WCW. On this segment, we celebrate the strength of a woman. Now, imagine this, waking up one morning and you realize that your mother did spend the night in your house and uh, apparently she spent the night at a neighbor's place. Reason being, your father battered her the whole night. This this is the story of Liz Mushiri. She is an educationist and the founder of Youth Enterprise. Engage us on all our social media platforms at Y254 channel at Faith and Soli. The hashtag is Y in the morning. Karibu sana. Thank you, Faith. Uh -huh. Good morning. Good morning to you. You look so gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you so much for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, appreciate to be here. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. So, this is Liz mm -hmm. Moshiri. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Liz Moshiri is uh, just another normal and ordinary Kenyan. Mm -hmm. um, she has grown just a normal child, mm -hmm. a, a normal child from than a normal background, mm -hmm. but of course, growing up, you know, life is full of challenges here mm -hmm. and there. But um, of course, irrespective of all the challenges, we are here today. We are here today. Yeah. And because of you being a strong woman, <laughs> you're here on this show today. And we just celebrate you and we are happy that today you're going to share your story and encourage a young girl or a young woman out there. Oh, great. That's my purpose, actually. Oh, wow. And so tell us, how was life growing up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I was just born in a normal family, mm -hmm. uh, having both parents mm -hmm. so and uh, I had some three brothers actually they are still there I mm -hmm. had three some three brothers and one sister mm -hmm. and uh, so growing up of course being I was actually I'm actually the last one in the family wow. so of course I got a lot of love from mm -hmm. the rest and yeah. a lot of attention yeah. but along the way um, I found my dad being used to like drinking mm -hmm. he used to drink a lot but mm -hmm. that time he was still working mm -hmm. so um at that tender age um we, we used to experience that domestic violence of course mm -hmm. he could come at from what work age was that? Uh, maybe from even around three years it was about three years mm -hmm. going up eh? mm -hmm. yeah so um so there are moments he would come home mm -hmm. he's drunk uh, he would just become violent mm -hmm. and uh, surprisingly my mom is that very submissive woman who mm -hmm. will not say a word mm -hmm. you know if she feels like they can they at this point you know like sometimes when things to do with drunkardness you cannot really come to a conclusion like yes. you cannot argue with yes. somebody who is high yes. so she would sometimes not even respond mm -hmm. so when the argument maybe she could feel the argument is too tough mm -hmm. she'll just pull sit out back. sit mm -hmm. back maybe walk out or something like that mm -hmm. now the problem is it didn't end there so sometimes my dad would get violent mm -hmm. send us out of the house mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes he would even lock us out, out of the gate. Wow. Yeah, so it, it was very difficult because, you know, as a child, you cannot really understand why you're going through this. Mm -hmm. And maybe comparing yourself with other families, you cannot really tell. Yes. Eh? Yeah, so it was tough all along. So mm -hmm. actually, when I was around uh, maybe 10 years, mm -hmm. he took an early retirement that mm -hmm. time. So the, Because of drunkenness? I think he just decided to quit, you know, like sometimes somebody just takes decisions. So maybe mm -hmm. he just took a decision to quit work. Mm -hmm. So I think he, he was just uh, projecting to have some major projects, but mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. So when I was in class five, actually I was the only person at home now with my mom. Mm -hmm. So that, that time it became like a habit. Every day he would go drink, come in the evening, send us away, just just like it, it just became like a norm mm -hmm. like every day i would come out from school in the evening and find my mom having cooked dinner mm -hmm. wow. and tell me just take your meal because we don't know what to expect today yes. and it was very tough now we would go maybe spend in a neighbor's place mm -hmm. early in the morning my mom was this still very determined woman mm -hmm. she would still wake up early mm -hmm. come knock at the gate mm -hmm. <laughs> he would open mm -hmm. allow us in mm -hmm. i would prepare and go to school mm -hmm. you know so as as a young girl it really traumatized me mm -hmm. 
and then the neighbors you have slept in their places. Exactly. <laughs> they go around, sending around the rumors like yes. how Alalangi Kwao, like Imagine. Their, their place is your refuge for like every night. Yes. So it was a, a little bit difficult even trying to explain. You know, like their friends will ask you and you try to explain. I don't know. It just happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. And then my dad was this, he had such a loud voice. Mm -hmm. So even like you were <laughs> casting to the whole village. <laughs> Yes, the whole village would know that you're out there, you're useless people, like you just need to spend the night out there. Mm -hmm. So everybody would hear what is going on. Mm -hmm. So maybe at some point, maybe our, our neighbors understood our situation, so they could not ask so much. Mm -hmm. But of course, my mom was there. She's a very prayerful woman. Mm -hmm. Since the time I came to now understand myself, I've always known her waking very early in the morning, even after spending, maybe when those few days that we'd spend at home, she would wake up very early, maybe at around three, pray for us, pray for all of us, including our dad. Mm -hmm. And I believe through her encouragement, she would to encourage us so much and tell us, I'm here for you, mm -hmm. and God is going to see us through this situation. Mm -hmm. So that's how it was. And fortunately, we kept working hard I kept working hard because mm -hmm. I actually didn't want to live the life my mom was living mm -hmm. because unfortunately she had left her job mm -hmm. to be a housewife wow. so for me I had decided that I don't want to be a housewife mm -hmm. I would want to work be an independent woman so that my life cannot depend on another person mm -hmm. you see so and I thank God I worked hard I passed and then yeah, I got to where I am today. And so, having gone through that, uh, seeing your mother going through all that, yes. how did, did it impact in your life as an adult today? Having seen your mother, your father with the domestic violence back at home, uh, did it make you at a point think of, I'll never get married or I'll never have a family? Um, uh, maybe not maybe not that much but it had an impact maybe that time I couldn't tell but today I can tell it had a serious impact because mm -hmm. um, to be honest I, I, I actually still have that fear of marriage because to me it felt like <laughs> to a woman it's it's not uh, it's not an easy thing mm -hmm. because she suffers for her children mm -hmm. actually at some point i even asked my mother why do you have to go through this yes. why, why can't you just take us to a grandfather and leave us there yeah. we live in peace but she used to tell me for my children i cannot live here mm -hmm. i cannot leave you here so i'm going to persevere to the end so for me I, one thing I decided that I'm going to work hard to be an independent woman. Uh, number two, um, okay, I, I felt like, okay, I have a bit of a reluctance about marriage. I'm not against it, <laughs> and I'm open to any opportunity yeah, that way. Like it's a prison. <laughs> Like you're imprisoned in a way. Yeah, somehow it felt like that. Mm -hmm. But for now I know maybe being independent, maybe you may not be as imprisoned yes. as when you are not independent. Uh, independent. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so if it comes across well and good, mm -hmm. but for now I'm just chasing my goals, mm -hmm. yes. And so talking of independence, there yes. is somewhere that you said that you had to go out, work hard. I don't know if you dropped out of school, but you had to go out and work hard and even pay for your school fees. What happened in between that your mother or your father couldn't support you? Oh, okay. Uh, now, because you understand now how my dad was, eh? <laughs> yeah, that, at that point, when actually when I cleared class eight. Mm -hmm. So um, that time, of course, he had money, but he called my brother. We had a family meeting. Mm -hmm. So our elder brother I happened to ask him, uh, what plans does he have for me now that I have cleared class eight, I have passed, I'm supposed to go to secondary school. So that moment he told my brothers and everybody that mm -hmm. he has no plans. So, um, of course, now everybody knew the burden is left to them. Eh? And, of course, my mom, being a, a housewife, had nothing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, our elder brother, George, yes. George, <laughs> I salute him. Mm -hmm. So, at 